Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 12. We continue looking at diffusion in gaseous discharges, in particular ambipolar diffusion, which is a type of diffusion that is only found in plasmas. We then examine how a plasma actually starts, known as plasma breakdown. Finally, we examine Passion's Law, which is the equation that determines the breakdown voltage required to produce a plasma. Ambipolar diffusion is peculiar to plasma physics. It follows the usual diffusion equation that we've looked at in a previous lecture. Let's recall the diffusion equation given by this, where gamma is the flux. Here we're symbolizing the velocity by U, subscript J. The J will stand for either electrons or ions. Mu is the mobility, N is the number density, E is electric field, and D is the diffusion coefficient. In plasmas, both electrons and ions are mobile, but electrons are much less massive than ions, so they are more mobile, that is, they move faster than ions. The consequence of this is as follows. Imagine you have electrons and ions as shown. Even if the energies of the two particles were equal, you will find that the electrons move faster than the ions. The consequence of that is that this charge separation will produce an electric field, which is known as the ambipolar field. But nevertheless, the flux of ions must still equal the flux of electrons in order to maintain quasi-neutrality. So we equate the fluxes of ions and electrons to a generic flux gamma. Let's now equate the fluxes of ions and electrons explicitly. To ensure quasi-neutrality, we equate the electron density to the ion density and let them both equal n. We now rearrange the expression for the equation of fluxes as follows, where E is now the ambipolar field. Substitute this expression for E into the flux equation for, say, ions. We obtain the following. Reorganizing this into this more compact form, notice that can rewrite the term that involves the mobilities and the diffusion coefficients into one constant. And this form of the flux equation looks very familiar. In fact, it is Fick's law. However, this time the diffusion coefficient is called the ambipolar diffusion coefficient and it purely arises in plasmas because it is a result of charge separation. A plasma includes several creation and loss mechanisms. One of them is diffusion. But as we've seen in a previous lecture, there are other mechanisms such as ionization and recombination. So let's find out how to incorporate these together with diffusion. Recall one of the fluid equations, in particular the continuity equation, given by this. Note that n times u is the flux. We also know that the expression for flux, gamma, is given by Fick's law. Substitute Fick's law into the continuity equation. We end up with this. The problem with this equation is that it assumes that the only loss mechanism for the plasma is diffusion. It basically says the rate of creation of a plasma with the dNdt is equal to the rate of loss of the plasma through diffusion. But we know that that's not really true. There are other mechanisms where you could create or lose particles in a plasma. Let's look at the case for the creation or loss of ions. We can rewrite this continuity equation with an added term on the right hand side. This term includes loss or creation mechanisms for the ions in the plasma. In a previous lecture, we've seen explicit terms for this. So the Q can be written in terms of the ionization and recombination of ions. Let's now look at how plasma actually starts from a gas. This is known as plasma breakdown and the equation that determines the breakdown voltage is known as Passion's Law. Imagine we have an anode and a cathode, that is positive and negative electrodes respectively, and we apply an electric field E along a distance x between the electrodes. 
In any gas, there are always free charged particles. They can be produced, say, by cosmic radiation. They can also be produced by other mechanisms, such as thermionic emission from a heated filament. But say we don't have that. There is a constant production rate of free charge by cosmic radiation striking the Earth. So when the electric field is applied, the free electrons accelerate from cathode to anode, undergoing several collisions, one of them being ionization. The electrons produced in ionization go on to further accelerate, and they themselves would cause further ionization. This avalanche of charge production by this mechanism is known as a Townsend discharge. Let's say that the electrons that are accelerating create alpha other electrons per unit length. We can write this as a linear first order differential equation like this, where Ne is the electron density. A solution to this equation is of this form. Now, the density N of charges is directly proportional to the current that will flow between the anode and the cathode. So we substitute the current I for N in the above equation, which becomes this. The current will grow exponentially if alpha is greater than zero. The problem is that this process alone can't sustain the discharge. Once all the free charges have been swept away by the electric field, there isn't a sufficient rate of production of charge by, say, the background cosmic radiation in order to sustain the discharge. So a secondary source of electrons is needed. The source of the electrons is actually the cathode. As ions are created in the plasma, they accelerate towards the cathode. And when they strike the cathode, they can release an electron called a secondary electron. Secondary electron emission is quantified by the so-called Townsend coefficient gamma, where the number of secondary electrons produced is directly proportional to the number of incident ions on the cathode. That constant of proportionality is gamma, the Townsend coefficient. We can equally write this equation in terms of currents. That is, on the left-hand side, the secondary electron current, Is, is equal to gamma times the incident ion current, I. We can now modify our previous expression for the current by adding the additional current, Is, to I0. We now substitute the expression for the secondary electron current, Is is equal to gamma I, and solve for I. We obtain this expression. Now, breakdown of the gas occurs when there is a large spike in the initial current as the electrons are swept away by the electric field and a rush of secondary electrons arise from the cathode. To quantify this, we say that the initial current goes to infinity. In fact, it doesn't go to infinity, but it does go to a very large spike in current. If the plasma was allowed to continue in that way, then it would result in an arc. However, to have a steady state plasma without resorting to an arc, we find that we need to limit the current in some way. We'll not discuss here how this is done. The end result is that we can mimic that large spike in current, that is, the current at breakdown, to be when the breakdown current I goes to infinity. Another way of saying this is that the denominator in this expression goes to zero. We need to obtain an expression for alpha. In the early days of discharge physics, John Townsend conducted many experiments, and out of these he came up with an empirical equation to the form of alpha, given by this equation, where A and B are constants, P is the pressure, and E is the electric field strength. Substituting this expression for alpha in our previous expression, given by this, and making use of the relationship between the potential difference at breakdown, that is the breakdown voltage VB, the electric field, and the distance D between the electrodes, we can finally arrive at the expression for the breakdown voltage, Vb. A plot of this relationship looks like this. The most notable feature of this curve is that there is a minimum breakdown voltage for a particular combination of the product of pressure and electrode distance, Pd.